Welcome to the Welcome to the Air It Out Show. You know, with them Air It Out girls. And it's another edition. Yes, it is. Welcome to the Welcome, welcome to, to the, the Air It Out Show. Ow! Get it, Air It Out girls. Ow! And yes. today we are airing out Miss Latonia Phillips. Yes. Welcome to the show, my lady. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Yes, our pleasure. <laughs> so, who is Latonia Phipps? Latonia Phipps is a little girl from Brooklyn with a big heart that pretty much was told that she was something called great. And so I I I kind of took that that and ran with it, you know. um, I've been studying acting for a very long time. This year I actually realized that both my father and my mother were actors. Yeah, that was like a jewel my dad dropped. In my in my pocket, I was like, "How all this time you ain't tell me you said that?" You know, what I mean? all the time I'm thinking I'm losing my mind or whatever. So yeah, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I have, I, I've just kind of been surrounded with stories. My background, my dad is Costa Rican and Jamaican, oh, nice. and my mom is from the south. And um, I lost my mom when I was a little girl, about ten years old, to ovarian cancer. And I kind of been on this kind of soul thing for the longest of trying to find myself. Am I an actor? Am I a writer? Who am I? Like, what represents me? And so I did some um, soul searching. I went to Russia. I went to Africa, and I studied theater there. Nice. And all these characters came about. And you know, um, although I'm very much within my faith, I also give homage to my African ancestry. Mm-hmm. And I started to do a lot of research on where I was from and what is this thing called home and home brought me back to mother mother tongue mother language mother curse like everything about you takes you back to your mother who taught you you know to do the twist who right. taught you how to press your hair everything goes back to the mother and so that's where this whole story came about of fishing in brooklyn me fishing for myself is really me fishing for my mother oh, so that's nice. kind of that's me in a nutshell i don't like that i don't like that so now it's a whole lot now Show. That was that was a plug because we didn't yes, get there yet. Yes, yes. But we told you gotta spat it up. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold that, we gonna pull that back. We gonna pull that back. All right. All right. So okay. So it seems like your mm-hmm. whole background, you've been searching for yourself, basically, yes. and. The fact that you're able to, you know, come into contact with your family mm-hmm. and know now exactly where you're from and, and you know where you're going is great. Mm-hmm. So today we're here to talk about your one woman show, right? Yes. Okay, now fishing in Brooklyn is what it's called, mm-hmm. right? Um, how long has it been in your in your manifestation of your mind? <laughs> uh, well, it's been with me for a very long time. I had this first show I did when I was about years old. <laughs> It was called Identity Unmasked Who I Be. So I was doing a lot of looking. You know okay. what I mean? And I didn't, it, it wasn't truth back then. I was just kind of having these characters, these stories. I didn't know where I was. And so I've been acting for a very long time. And um, as actors know, you know, you come a moment in your life where the phone ain't ringing. Yeah. You know, and so I've always been a strong writer, a strong poet. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make the phone ring. So I joined this writing group and I started writing. It was in 2010, mm-hmm. 9, 10. And I started writing and I started taking this workshop, going back into childhood memories. And so I just wrote all these memories. And for some reason, I kept on going back to this day that me and my mom went fishing. Wow. And we used to go fishing a lot. And I was like, what is this thing about fishing? And so I'm writing these stories and I'm hearing her voice. I'm hearing when we did the electric slide together. <laughs> I'm hearing when she told me, I got you, girl, before she passed away. I'm hearing all these voices in my head and I'm just writing them. And I'm like, what is this fishing? Like, what am I fishing? For. And so I was talking to one of the mentors I was with. He was like, Fishing, Fishing in Brooklyn. That sounds like a good title. So I'm going with this Fishing in Brooklyn, and for some reason, all of these characters came out. And my director actually refers to them as spirits. You know, you can refer to them as whatever. But it was just like, it was haunting me, like everywhere I went. And so I write this play. I, I always say that I kind of threw up this play because it was, <laughs> literally, it, it was just a whole on the play. poetry. <laughs> it was not linear. I didn't know where it was. I call art because art, uh, my drama, we used to do a show together. And I was like, ah, uh, art, like, I need you to work with me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I get this show together and I write it down and I put it up for a couple of people 
And all of a sudden, like, all these theater companies start calling me, like, can you come to Woodstock, New York? Nice. Can you come to Philadelphia? <laughs> and I was like, um, I'm just an actor. I'm not a producer. I'm not really a writer. I don't know what I'm doing. No, but you know? the thing is, you have, to, you have to start claiming those things. Yes. Because you are those things. And yeah. you're writing, you're acting, you're Amen. producing. So you have to, you have to say those Manifest things. It, yeah. You have to put it out there and fish all of those lessons back. Because yeah, if, you, if you keep it like, ah, I don't know to that. <laughs> No, because you know we we yes. both know like Amen. it's hard. We the hustle, from, well. yeah. We come from different entertainment, and we know that you have to take your destiny in your hands because mm -hmm. you know waiting for somebody walking through the door and casting mm -hmm. and this and that, yeah, and no it's more. really like you know sometimes yeah. you just have to do your own thing. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Self producing was something that I was introduced to actually I studied at the National Theater Institute in um, Connecticut and we went to Russia and we were told there that you are not just an actor you are everything so I was able to get all these hats there Good. and so when I first started my show it was a fear there and then in my faith I was told that fear is not within you so I just went and I was like I am a producer I am a writer all right I'm now. all of this and I'm gonna make the phone calls come and the phone calls are still coming. You see, when are you putting this show back up? Listen, y'all. When are you reworking it? When are you doing that? And so I tell all my actor friends, like, write your own shows, especially shows about black women of color. Yes. Like, nobody's writing our shows right now. And if they are writing it, it's not coming from us. Mm -hmm. So we need to write our own shows. Exactly. You know what I mean? I love the way that sounds. How oh, inspirational is that? Do it. <laughs> so what is, what is one of your favorite parts of, um, of preparing yourself to do this show? It's the preparation. It is the preparation. It's um, first starting with the voices of the characters and allowing them to live. I watch a lot of people. Like even walking in here, I watch you guys. Right. You know what I mean? I'm constantly studying people. I'm on a train. People think I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to like mimic their talk. People are interesting. When you really see yes. that, take the train <laughs> the and train watch is, people. Oh, I take full the of train. material. Like the, full yes, of material. It's the best the theater. Episode. During every, Shakespeare's every time, day. they had it everywhere. You know. Watching people and their like their little um, quirks and all of everything about them is interesting. And the crazy other person, however, it's more interesting because you're like, wow, what happened in your life? You know what I mean? Like really, what happened to you? And that makes me want to get to know you and tell your story because it's not that you're crazy. It's that you're forgotten about and nobody took care of you because you have schizophrenia. Right. And you don't have money to get that, so you're mm -hmm. deemed as crazy. You get me? So all these stories, and I'm always watching people and just taking I'm like, that is a character. I am taking that, mm -hmm. and I'm telling your story. You know, so. I see the characters. They are in every curl. Yes, they head. are. And they I have the hair. Very cute. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> all the characters. <laughs> yes, they're all big. They're, yes, some of them are sprouting. Thank you. Yes, but I see them all. Thank you. Like yes. <laughs> Very Listen, cute. Air it out, viewers. I have to tell you this, because... Um, the day that I bumped into this um, awesome person, I was actually in the train station, yes. which is kind of hilarious. And she just kind of walked up to me and she's like, aren't you from the Airedale show? And I just was just like, oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes I well, yes, I am. So I'm saying that to say that you, when you view the show, mm -hmm. when you see Pink Panther, when you see me, you know, if you have a business card or you have something, you know, going on, approach us. We're okay, but approach cautiously. Yeah. But, like, let us know that, you know, you've been watching so that we know that it's all peace. And, you and when you come, yeah, me. come to the show and air it out. Yeah. Now, I do want to just read this little synopsis of the show sure. so that people um, will know about it. It's just really small. Or you mm -hmm. can just give us a synopsis of it. Because you, you, you sent this in, but... It's better to come from you. Now, you know it's the stories and things like that. Mm -hmm. But when exactly is the show going up? The show is going up February 23rd, and it's going up at the West Beth Community Center. It's 155 Bank Street. It's literally right next to the Labyrinth Theater. Get off at 14th Street and 8th. You can take the A, C, and L right there and just literally walk down. It's a beautiful environment. Like... If you believe in God, God is all up in there, okay? Right. It is like he really <laughs> gave this place to me. Um, it's an amazing place, so come check it out the show. Get some good drumming. Get some good shout-outs. It's just amazing, and you'll see me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, with that being said, I'm ready to see what the show is all about. Oh, for sure. Is there, is there anything else that you want to say? Before sure. You? Um, so, this how much are the tickets? Is it free? Is Actually, it's yeah. a $5 suggested donation. Okay. The show has gone up before. I took a hiatus and I actually reworked the script. So what you guys will be seeing is a reading of a new script and actually 21 characters. Wow. When we first put it up, it was about 15, now it's 21. So you get a new script, you get more characters, and you get mad fun. Also, at the end 
of the reading, I will be doing a solo workshop with you to learn how to write a solo show. So. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Listen, she said a suggested price of yeah. $5. So we suggest you bring 10 and leave that all in the bin. Okay? Right. Amen. All right. Now. <laughs> receive that. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so you have someone here with you, right? Yes, I do. My drama, Arthur Toombs. Okay. All right. Hello. My name is Arthur Toombs. Uh, I'm a drummer. I come out of Bernie's Johnson Dance Studio, Jamaica, Queens. I've uh, been drumming for many years. Um, if you want to contact me, my name, my uh, email is uh, jimbay141 at aol.com. Uh, my phone number is 646-240-0242. So give me a call. One time we were playing double dutch doing free time, Cynthia. And she always smelled like fruit road loves. And she got a birthmark on the side of her cheek, shaped like macaroni. My favorite food, macaroni and cheese, Cynthia. And she had this deep sounding voice that sounded like Shanene meets Shade. <laughs> Cynthia. Get well soon. Love, Tia. Welcome to the Air It Out Show. You know, with them Air It Out girls. 